Hey guys, Wild, and uh, today I, I figured since ever a lot of people did like my video that it uh, that I did on counters and stuff, and a lot of people have just been asking me to kind of just do more meta game related discussion videos and just kind of going over other kinds of concepts. I figured I would start doing like a little series of them. So uh, if there's some specific concept or some general concept, whatever in the metagame that you'd like me to go over in a video that you don't exactly get that you think I could understand or I could explain. I mean, I don't, I'm not exactly the most skilled player ever, so I can't give you like the best team building advice or blah, 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 blah. But I mean, if there's some concepts you want me to go over that you think I can do or just anything metagame related that you would like a, a video about that would be very informative to everyone, uh, leave a comment below on what you would want, and, uh, we might try and do it. So, uh, anyways, <clears throat> today I figured we'd start off the little, uh, competitive discussion stuff with something very near and dear to my heart, and that is U-Turn and Volt Switch, or better known as, uh, Volt Turning. But, uh, basically, if you don't know what Volt Switch and U-Turn are, uh, I think they're both base 70. Yeah, they're both base 70. U-Turn is a physical bug type attack, and Volt Switch is a uh, electric special type attack. Well, it's an electric type special attack, and U-Turn is a bug physical. Whatever. The point is, what they do is, you know, they hit their f for their fucking damage, but then on the conclusion of the move, you switch out. Or you're allowed the choice, or allowed the ability to switch out. I mean, you have you you are forced to switch out. So let's say I have a scissor in against a goddamn uh, Blissey, and I use U-turn. I hit it, and then I switch out into something else. So um, <clears throat> a lot of people may ask why these moves are useful and what the purpose of them are. And then also in this video, I'm gonna kind of go over the point of uh, scouting in a sense, and pivots, but, uh, first, I guess, just kind of go over the concept of why they're good, and I'm gonna kind of take it back a bit to, uh, 4th gen, and for those of you who don't know 4th gen, that was Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, Heart, Gold, Soul, Silver, so, that era, so, back then, we did not have team preview, we, you know, just went into a battle, we already had our leads chosen, so, 4th gen, just straight off the bat, did have real concrete leads, so, like, that was kind of weird for us when we made the transition to 5th gen, because we weren't used to having non-concrete leads, we weren't used to having team preview, like, I mean, they, were, they had it on PVR, or PBR, but that wasn't really common, but, or, you know, that used, because, uh, PBR, but anyways, uh, part of 4th gen was, we didn't know team preview, the minute the battle started, we saw leads, now, the more experienced metagame players obviously c could deduce teams really quick and really early, and you had a general idea of what people would use on a team. Like, if I saw a Machamp lead, I'd be like, okay, he's going to have things that will probably support that or things that would be supported by that. So you can kind of piece together some parts of their team by that anyways. And the general fact of, you know, if they're a skilled player, they're going to have certain things on their team to just combat blah, 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 blah. Like... Let's say I load with Heatran. There's a good chance he might have a Celebi or a Water type, so I'm gonna have to play around it like that. But you know that wasn't always the case. And uh, <clears throat> back in fourth gen, we only had U-turn. We didn't have Volt Switch, so there was that factor of we only had that one type of pivoting. So, but the the point of U-turn back in fourth gen was mainly to scout because of the fact that we didn't have that knowledge <clears throat> of the opponent's team, and we needed to gain that knowledge of the opponent's team by forcing them to go into things, and uh, blah, 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 blah. So, actually, I do have a decent example of that. I just gotta go to my fucking video manager. I, I don't script anything. You guys should know this by now, but uh, that notification is gonna annoy the shit out of me. Let's see what it is. Let's read a notification while I look for a video, guys. Oh, someone just plus one to comment. But anyways, um, let's see, old battle, old battle, old battle. That actually matters. Um, just thinking, thinking. Uh, uh, oh, right here. Actually, this is a decent enough example. 
Which, also, I'm going to laugh at the fact that I was actually just watching this video last night. That was a battle against Vex, but we had both four... Well, we, four of our six of our Pokemon on our teams were the same, but, uh... <clears throat> now, the example was... I U-turned out with my Azelf because it was a proper move to make. Because Azelf versus Azelf, it seems good to U-turn. He light screen for some reason. But, uh, I go to my Jirachi. Now... Immediately when I go out to Jirachi like that, it does threaten him out. Sure, I reveal a portion of my team, but he is threatened out by that, and the Iron Head seems fairly obvious. So I U-turn because, one, it could kill him, and two, there's a chance he could switch. So now I gain more knowledge of his team, which is incredibly useful because now it, it would give me more of an idea like, oh, he's going to now probably have a Steel type somewhere. Did he have a Steel type? Yeah, he did have the Jirachi, so... Like, it gave me more knowledge in that sense of his team, plus, <clears throat> as opposed to hard switching, it gave me, well, it also gives me a knowledge that, you know, in a second, I did that little bit of damage, so I do gain the knowledge that he does have the leftovers right there, which, even in 5th gen, is an important fucking concept, because, let's say it's, uh, Genesec versus Rotom. Now, Rotom is generally a defensive Pokemon, but... Let's say I U-turn with that Genesect, um, you know, I do a set amount of damage. First of all, you can judge that damage being, okay, if it did a bit more than I would normally think it does, then his Rotom could be Scarfed because it does not have max HP investment, and then I go into something expecting that I don't see any leftovers, then I could assume that he is Choice Scarfed because of that, or let's say it did a regular amount of damage, but... He doesn't have leftovers. He could be Chesto Berry, too. So, that U-turning does add a lot to scouting items, which I go back to that scouting factor of uh, <clears throat> the fact that... I'm trying to think of what to fucking say, but... Uh, you know, that scouting factor of if I learn the items, then I learn more about the Pokemon. Because in 5th Gen, obviously, we don't have... T or we do have... Well, this is 6th Gen now, but in 5th and 6th Gen... We do have that team preview, so we do have the idea of seeing their teams. And however much you can guess what their sets are, getting that uh, knowledge of their stuff is way more important than, you know, anything else could be. Because that item is the difference between you switching in a uh, <clears throat> Celebi expecting him or me switching in my Scarf Celebi expecting his Rotom to be Scarfed, or, or the difference of uh, going into uh, Landers expecting him to be defensive and being able to, you know, revenge him and give him a false sense of security. Now, I know the Landers example is really bad, but there is actually a sense where that can work if I do enough damage to him, then Landers can revenge because Landers isn't terrible, you know? But uh, it, it's kind of an example of that. It's the difference between what you switch in and what you don't switch in. So, gaining that knowledge, something may seem obvious, but you always have to gain that knowledge prior. And by using U-Turn and Volt Switch, you gain that knowledge. Now, it's not always the best move to go for, but if you can gain more knowledge in your opponent quicker, it's always a good thing. You can Sometimes you can give too much information to your opponent, so you do have to be careful playing it like that. So... There's that factor of that, too. Um, but, yeah, it, it's really just... U-Turn and Voltrich do provide a very nice knowledge basis for you to go off of. And, like I said, knowledge is one of the best ways you can win a Pokemon battle. Because when you learn something about their set, you know how to play around it, and you do get an idea of what the rest of their team is about. Because if I, for some reason, have a Scarf Lander, so you're going to assume... Okay, so if this thing is Scarfed, then I'm going to get the idea of this other thing on his team is defensive, which may happen to have the versatility of Landers as well, being defensive, defensive or offensive. So I can get that knowledge of, oh, he's going to do this or that with this Pokemon, so I'm going to do this or that with my Pokemon. And you can gain all that from you turning and Volt Switching, because that little bit of damage, if not much, uh, does provide a good advantage. And uh, so it's really a huge knowledge factor, which, have the reason I use U-Turn and Volt Switch, it does go back to my Diamond and Pearl, or my 4th gen routes, because, you know, that's where I was probably the best at playing Pokemon, and honestly, if, 
I just sat here and played fourth gen all day. That's probably where I would be best. I, <laughs> I just don't have the same uh, knowledge or skill in the other gens. I mean, I can still play them just fine. It's just, you know, that's where my highest basis of knowledge is from. But back in fourth gen, you know, that that knowledge or the U-turning factor, it uh, it really stuck with me because gaining that knowledge is something that I really like doing and. It worked for my playstyle because I kind of played a bit more offensive. Like, I wasn't hyper-offensive, and I wasn't exactly bulky offensive. I kind of lied in the middle of that. Like, I had a little bit of underlying bulk, but even my bulky stuff had a good uh, offensive push. And then most of my other team was really uh, heavy hitters and stuff. So, you know, it, it was this weird in-between a bulky offense and hyper-offense. So... In that essence, U-turning worked for me because it let my guys do what they were supposed to do and gain the proper advantage to do so. Now, the other concept I mentioned was pivoting. Now, what pivoting basically is, is let's say, again, for example, I have a, uh, I have a Landers out against a Rotom. Now, the Rotom could either go for Will-O-Wisp or Hydro Pump. Most likely. So, my Landorus, I know is faster because I already scouted out his Rotom. I saw, let's say, for example, my leftovers go first before his leftovers, which is a very important concept, by the way. Um, if you don't understand that, if your item goes before uh, your opponent's, or let's say your status goes before your opponent's, you are faster. So, remember that when you're battling. It's actually a huge concept. Like, Sure, there is a factor of speed ties, but if you see your item or your uh, status go before your opponent, you know, more off or every single time, then you're going to know you're faster. So that is a very key thing to keep in mind. Or if you're hit by Sandstorm first, then you'll know you are faster. So keep that in mind first. But let's say I already know my Landers is going to outspeed this Rotom, so... I go for that U-turn, and I know he's going to go for a move to hit my Landers and not something else. So, I make that U-turn, and let's say I go back into Celebi. So, I go into that Celebi, yeah, and uh, he goes for that Hydro Pump or that Will-O-Wisp. Now, <sighs> actually, that was a really bad example. I apologize. Um, no, a better example would be, uh, you know... But yeah, that's an example of why U-turn is good, because I, instead of doing that hard switch, I make sure also that he's staying in, and that the switch into Celebi is proper, but let's take that on a flip side, actually. So, here's a proper way a pivot would work. Um, you know, so I have the Rotom versus Lander, so Lander is U-turns, and then he brings in the Celebi. Now, my... I decide I know he's going to switch, so I go for the Volt Switch predicting that, and I make that pivot out from that Celebi, because basically what happened there, he tries to gain advantage off of my, my supposed advantage, but then he creates a disadvantage, because I go for that Volt Switch as a Celebi comes in. Not only do I gain free switch initiative from that, but I you know, gain advantage, because that switch initiative is very important, the fact that, okay, so, now, he thought he would have the choice of how he's going to come into my Rotom, and now I have a choice of how I go into his Celebi, so now, I'm going to force him to do something he doesn't want to do, because I can Volt Switch out to, let's say, my Infernape, who I know is going to be able to take on the Celebi, he has to make the choice of what he goes out to next, and let's say I have U-turn on that uh, Infernape as well, I can U-turn with that Infernape on the fairly obvious switch, because Celebi can't even take a U-turn either, so there's that factor of, I'm forcing him out more than once, and I'm gaining a lot of initiative, because I'm forcing him to keep doing those switches, which are not healthy for his team, because he's giving me more and more ways to keep him in a corner, but he's not doing any push to me, because he doesn't have the initiative to do so. Now, there is that factor of, you can do that too much, as to where, uh, you won't gain any advantage, and you'll kind of get fucked over. Like, let's say, oh, I'm going to keep U-turning, and I keep taking Hazard's damage, for example. Um, hazard's is a very important part in the metagame. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Even though Defog is still a prevalent move in the metagame, 
hazards are still going to be one of the most important things you can ever think of. So you have to think of hazards every time you make a move, honestly. Like, even when you're U-turning, because you do take those hazards every time you switch in, you do have to keep in mind what they are doing to your team. So if you get too weak and they're baiting you into doing that, then you're going to lose really quick. Um, but if you can do the flip to them where you have your hazards up and you're forcing them to continuously switch out because you're laying on that pressure, then you're going to be fucking golden. Now, obviously, like, the U-turning style isn't exactly the best thing ever when you're facing, for example, like, a stall team because they're built around you constantly switching or keeping you uh, fast-paced because they're playing the slow game. So that's an example of why you wouldn't want to U-turn so much is if you're playing stall, unless you're somehow able to apply pressure to them really well, then nothing is really going to matter because that's how they're, you know, playing is to keep you going and going and going. Um, I'm just trying to think of what else I wanted to say, but, uh, you know, U-turning, obviously, it, like I said, it, the pivoting factor of it does help you immensely because of the fact that, oh, I can just get my free initiative into something else and then keep the pressure lying on them, but you have to play it properly, otherwise, like I said, you get caught on the wrong side of it where all you're doing is constantly you turning out, but you're gaining no advantage because of how their team is set up, maybe, so... At some point, you do have to go into the proper thing and just clamp down and just fucking hit them. I know my playstyle isn't exa isn't exactly a showing of that, but that's just personally how I play because I know how to uh, pivot out and gain advantage at the same time, and it really takes a long time to get a grasp of that, and it has to really just be part of your playstyle. Like, for example, I have that one fucking team. Let me open up Showdown really quick. Um, I have that one fucking team... Uh, if this will fucking load. Please load. Already showdown. That would be nice. All I want to do is get in the team builder. Come on, showdown. Apparently it doesn't want to load. Let's see if I can get showdown open on, like... Here, let me try closing and reopening it. I guess showdown is sucking too much right now. There we go. Alright, team builder. Fucking, I think it's like team 16 or something. Here we go. This team right here. Tyrant's alright. Normally isn't there. But basically the team is built on five Pokemon with the ability to U-turn or Volt Switch. And then I have this fucking Tyranitar right here, which, uh, you know, it's... We'll watch him call it. It's got no U-turn or Volt Switch, but... I can use the advantage on this team. Now, most of this team is actually choice, so that's just something to keep in mind, too, but it works for how I play it. So, like, you know, I U-turn, oh, now I gotta go into this other choicer, and then... But then it's built where I have this core of defenders. Now, uh, you know, this isn't the most bulky thing ever, so, I mean... But it just works for the fucking team. But I have this core of defenders that makes it so... Even if I lose some sort of little initiative by that U-turning, I can gain it back very quickly by what they do. So, uh, and then it's just the basis of the team is just, you know, keep the pressure on them because that's how the team is built up to do. And then Tyranitar is just meant to trap things that could potentially pose a threat or just deal massive amounts of damage uh, to where, you know, they're not gonna like dealing with me in a sense. So... It's just how the team is built and how my playstyle is, you know, meant to be. And you guys know I am a very, uh, volt turny kind of person. That's just how I do shit. So that's just personally how I like to play and that's how it's worked for me. And like I said, a lot of it was just built on my fourth gen mentality of, oh, I need to gain this early advantage so that I know what they're doing. They may gain something from me, but I can play around their knowledge of me because... I'm gaining a lot by learning, first of all, oh, hey, I know how they're going to play this move or this move. And then there's the factor of, uh, you know, I, I learn a bit about their play style really early, but all they've seen from me is I'm just turning, turning, turning. And then I can instantly switch to just laying on the fucking heat. So there's that factor of you just play it right and it works, you know. It's, you, you can't just constantly 
attempt to lay on pressure, lay on pressure with turning. You have to mix it together well with doing other strategies, such as just fucking laying on the heat. You know, like, uh, I'm just trying to think of a good team I've made lately. I haven't made any good teams lately, I'll say that much. But, uh, like, for example, this team wasn't too bad, I guess. Like, a lot of it was just based on, you know, I have this star after right here to revenge stuff, and then Rotom, Greninja just kind of turn around so I can go, let's say, you know, and Ferrothorn was decent bait in to bring some stuff. It, it was decent bait so I could bring out some certain threats so that I could uh, deal them with other things, blah, blah, blah. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm really probably just talking out of my ass, so ignore half the shit I say. <laughs> but it's really just a matter of gaining the proper uh, footing so that you can do the right things to your opponents. So, U-Turn and Volt Switch, they are very great moves, but they have to work with your play style, because not everyone is good at doing that, because, you know, you gain initiative in a ton of other ways. That's personally how I gain initiative, and how I personally play. It may not be for you. You may be the kind of person who just sits there and waits, and that's perfectly fine. You can sit there and wait and gain knowledge of your opponent's team and gain initiative in that sense. And there's nothing wrong with that. You can gain initiative by just beating the shit out of the opponent and forcing them to uh, bring in their shit like that, and then you have the proper backing to be able to go and... Uh, like, let's say you're just beating down your opponent's team with Terrakion, they bring in some kind of counter or check, and you're forcing that out, essentially, so that you can go into your other thing that can deal with that counter or check, and then force them to, you know, maybe go out and then waste this other thing, so that you're just constantly wearing them down to the point where they can't deal with anything you've got. I mean, that's another kind of play style, but personally, how my play style is, is I gain the knowledge of my opponent very quick, and then I use it against them. So, that's just personally how I play, and that's how you can use U-turning and Volt Switching for yourself. It's not meant for everyone, obviously. It's just a certain playstyle that was pretty popular for a while, and, you know, a lot of people joke around with me and like, oh, you're the fucking king of Volt Turning, and it's just personally how my playstyle adapted. Other people are like that too, but, you know, it's just personally how you play and personally how you like to play. You don't have to Volt Turn. It's not necessary. Some Pokemon are good at it, some Pokemon are not, and it's just all a matter of if it works for you. So, uh, hopefully I explain it well enough. I feel like I really don't, and I just bullshit a lot, but, I mean, if you feel like you learned something from this, or you gain a little bit of insight on how something works, then I did my job, and I'm sorry if I did it fucking terribly, because it's just how my mind works, where a lot of things come in at the same time, and I'm just trying to coherently say them, so... Hopefully it did gain a little bit of insight as to the subject, and uh, hopefully I didn't, you know, misrepresent it or, you know, make you think otherwise of it, or I don't, hopefully I didn't miss anything too important about it, but, um, yeah, I guess this will be it for this, because otherwise I'm going to go on for too long about other stupid fucking bullshit, but if you want me to discuss other kinds of things you think I might know a thing or two about, leave a comment down below, um... If I left something out stupidly, let me know, and maybe I'll remedy it in a future video, but, you know, hopefully I did a good enough job, I'm not fucking sure if I did, but if I did, awesome, if I didn't, well, I'm sorry. But, uh, that'll be it for this, so, hope you guys enjoyed, such, such, blah, recommend sub, and later, guys.